we we've just went over how to win the second quarter, right? And I think if yeah. if your eye is not on the prize right now as an agent, you got to have a serious meeting with yourself, literally, like as soon as you're done listening to this, to get your business plan together and what you're going to commit to over these next 75, 90 days, because there there is that kind of trickle over effect into early July. We went over what the CPI data means. We've seen rates come down. Let's talk about the Fed, because there's a lot of people out there that are saying all eyes are on the Fed at this next meeting coming up, which is in 19 days, three hours and 27 minutes. This is when the next meeting's happening. And it doesn't sound like the Fed is going to blink here. The CME Group Market Watch tool has pegged an 85.2% chance that the Fed will be raising rates another 25 basis points. A lot of experts are calling for them to pause and stop the rate hikes. Are they going to keep going up? What's going to happen? How's Jerome Powell, Byron's BFF? These guys are, uh, you know, they, they, they exchange Instagram messages all the time. What is Jerome Powell going to do in the next three weeks? I mean, the market believes, like you just said, that he's going to raise 25 basis points. Uh, Bloomberg reported this morning that they believe they will do that 25 basis point hike, but that it'll be the last one. And then Bloomberg said uh, the market is pricing in three rate cuts after June. Wow. So I don't I just don't understand it. If you're planning on cutting in the second half of the year, because just this week, Tom, we had the meeting minutes from their last uh, Fed mm -hmm. meeting that were released. They released their minutes three weeks after the, the meeting. Very efficient. And in the like, like... in the minutes, it said that the uh, FOMC, the committee, believes that we are going to go into a recession before the end of the year. Okay, so the Fed's belief is we're heading into a recession. Now they're blaming it on the banking crisis. At the same time, the other side of their mouth, they're saying your deposits are safe. So, so we're telling you the banking crisis is what's going to cause the recession. There's our scapegoat, banking crisis. Your deposits are 100% safe. Don't worry about the banking crisis as a depositor. Nothing to worry about, although it's going to cause recession. So I don't know, reading between the lines of the flip floppy Fed, I'm seeing that, okay, we're going to have another rate hike just to start rate cutting the end of the year. Once we go into recession, it's going to be like, oh my gosh, we went into recession. Now we got to go full steam ahead the other direction. I mean, what, how did we get here in the first place? We printed all this money too fast, too quickly, too much. Then we started to jack up interest rates to break the economy too fast, potentially too much. And we're going to do one more rate hike in three weeks just so that we can do three rate cuts the end of the year. I would pause. They're not going to do it. They're going to do a 25 basis point hike. Now, when I look at where we're going to sit in December, if that if what Bloomberg is saying, how this is going to play out actually comes to fruition, you know, this means I think that, yeah, Fetty and Franny and all of these uh, projectors of the 30 year fixed are going to be right. And we're going to see a 30 year fixed under 6% to end the year, which is what we care about. Mm -hmm. So going into 2024, I think we'll have a better spring market with total transaction count in 24 than we're experiencing this year because the rate's going to be lower. Um, but how much pain, how much job loss? are we going to have to navigate to get there between this spring and next spring? Well, you know, as a business owner, if someone told me, hey, we want you to increase a certain expenditure only to decrease it three times later in the year, my response would be, how about we decrease it twice and show some stability and let things play out? And, you know, it's the, the challenging thing here is whether we like it or not, the Fed has some political motivations here. I mean, it's just they're, they're part of the government, right? So you got to you, you mentioned flip flopping. I think that's the, the in order to be a politician, you have to learn to say the exact opposite thing within one breadth of each other. And that's what we're dealing with here. It doesn't make any sense. Um, I mean, every economist out there that knows what their stuff, they are saying, hey, let's chill out. Let's let this play out here. 
And look at what's happened with mortgage rates being stable these past couple of weeks. Obviously, they've been dropping, but we've seen a fluctuation basically between six and six and three eighths over the past 14 days. That That's the spread I've seen that people have locked in. It's created more confidence in the market. It's created a still a very fast paced market, not that fever pitch we were seeing in the second half of 2020, 21, first half of 22. And that's what consumers want, that they're OK with a fast paced market, not a bananas market, not an incredible, incredibly crazy market. So I, I don't from from just a business owner standpoint, why raise once to cut three times? Just cut it twice. Let it play out. Let everyone kind of chill out a little bit here. And imagine the reaction from consumers right now. If the Fed came out and said, hey, things are going in the right direction. The uh, president of the Fed in Chicago just said the same thing uh, today. He came out and said that um, he feels that things are going in the right direction um, and that it looks like the measures are working. So we're going to let things settle for a little bit. The confidence that would give consumers would go a long way instead of, hey, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're going to keep doing this. And I, it's a great example of the micromanagement of the Fed instead of letting the market play out here and react to the measures that they're taking. Because if you in your business, Byron, right, let's say you had a bad month, right, but it was maybe looking better than last month. And you started to say, hey, we're going to keep doing it again. Like we're going to keep making changes and adjusting. That wouldn't play well with the people in your business and your clientele. And that's exactly what the Fed's doing. 